Okay, guys, welcome to another week of This Week with Brett Olds. Uh, you've got me, Brett Olds, again, uh, every bloody week. And uh, today on the show, I've got a guest. I've had him on two or three times over the last couple of years, Dennis O'Connor from Awaken Health, Awakening in Health. Sorry, How you been, Dennis? Yeah, good, mate. Uh, thanks for the invite in this morning. Yeah, I gave him a, I had another guy lined up who was going to come in with me, and he, he pulled out at about uh, 5.30 this morning. I got a text. And, uh, and I thought, oh, who am I going to get in? Because, you know, I was going to have a chat. It's a bit better when you can bounce off people. And I texted Dennis at, uh, I think I texted you at 7 o'clock, quarter past 7. Around that, yeah. Yeah, and you, and you came in. 45 minutes later, we're here doing the show. <laughs> so thanks, Dennis. No worries. Hey, we're just talking off air a second ago. Um, well, I was actually, we've got a bunch of things I want to talk about today. But I just mentioned um, I've been, I started running. I, I haven't been drinking for almost seven weeks. Well I just, well, I was just feeling bloated all the time and I wasn't enjoying having a beer. I know all my mates out there were like, oh, evil man, you know, have a beer. But I just wasn't enjoying it and I was always felt bloated and I was kind of drinking every night too, a few wines or a few beers on the weekends. So I just, I stopped and it wasn't about losing weight. I just, and I started feeling really good. And I've actually, then I started walking or I've been walking for about three months, just a couple times a week. But I've started running. I went on the treadmill on Friday and did 5Ks, and I did 5Ks last night, and I'm bloody sore uh, everywhere. <laughs> and you were giving me some pointers on, uh, you know, because now that I'm not drinking everything, I'm like, you know what, I might as well take advantage and try and lose some weight before I get into the Christmas season. And there might be other listeners out there in the same boat, you know, it's coming into festive season, eating a lot, drinking a lot. Um, what are your, so you were telling me uh, eat more meat, less carbs, and um, high collagen, like ham hocks and so, so what? What uh, again? It kind of, I guess, f- goes down the 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 avenue that we normally uh, talk about, which is essentially d- talking about misinformation. And one of the things that uh, my journey. I, I mean, people might know some of my stuff. It's awakening in health, and I guess I spent about the last ten years unlearning just about everything I was taught in mainstream health. So I was a clinical nurse consultant, did intensive care, uh, did lots of mental health, addiction, and whatnot, and. It, it started be, to become, it was always fairly obvious, but it just started to become more and more and more obvious. And this is a nice segue into something else we were talking about off the camera, about the the motives behind the health information that we're getting. And if you look at something called the food pyramid, that doctors and, and surgeries are still talking about, hospitals are still talking about it, clinics are still talking about it, it is scientifically absolute rubbish. The food pyramid that we're given is absolute rubbish. In America, even the, the nutritional um, tables that were that uh, the people there are given by the government have things like breakfast cereal in the top five, and they have <laughs> things like meat and fat at the bottom because supposedly it causes high cholesterol, and high cholesterol is linked to heart disease. Again, it's absolute rubbish. The government if, wouldn't lie to us, would they, Dennis? Oh, here we go, Brett. <laughs> yeah, we are going to start ranting. But again, if anybody is, has high cholesterol, uh, or it's 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 another absolute misnomer. There's a massive link between cholesterol tablets and things like Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay, yeah. so we have to disregard fully all the information that uh, these agencies that the government coming from the government are giving us we disregard it okay so we have this tenuous link between calories and weight yep and again there's science to back this up i'm happy if people call into you or they call into me and i can validate what i'm saying but for people to have a focus on calories in relation to dropping weight is another fallacy it's a myth okay the things that cause weight one of the purposes for fat is to store toxicity. So it separates toxins from the rest of your body and stores it in your adipose tissue. So it's not the fact that it's uh, fat and it's protecting us from winter and it's keeping us warm. Who who needs to be fat and protected from from the cold in cans? And you look around in the shopping center, there's so many overweight people here, so it's apps, that's rubbish. There's, there's one in this room with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. So that's rubbish. So, so we got to drop these so-called experts telling us what to do without looking into it. And if you don't know how to look into yourself, go to people like myself who can look into it and give you information. And I'll, and I'll give you a shortcut for it. But uh, the things that are making us fat are processed foods. Okay, and processed foods are highly toxic. Another absolute myth is the fact that salt is bad for you. And there's 50% of truth to that because the table salt we have, that white stuff is absolute poison, but we're deficient of good salts. So your Celtic salts and your Himalayan salts, get as much of that into you as you want. They can't 
uh, they can't poison you, but the white stuff is absolutely toxic and it draws all these different minerals and vitamins out of your body. What's the white stuff? Do? Has it what, has it been iodized? What's what's happened? Totally. To it? So so the big thing about about table salt is it's been purified, and uh, table salt is only sodium chloride. So normal salt or good salt or sea salt or your better salts have up anything from seventy five to ninety five different minimal minerals and vitamins in them. And once you have a balanced salt, it is exactly that. It's balanced. A table salt, the white stuff, the saxa, is not balanced and it's poisoning poisoning you. So it's ripping fluids and all these different ways in your body. It's ripping all sorts of different uh, vitamins and minerals and throwing them around in places where you don't want them. Okay. Yeah, okay. And it's your processed foods that are high, highly poisonous with all those horrible, horrible toxic salts. So if you start addressing those things first, so in other words, you cut out your, 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 your takeaways, anything in a plastic uh, bag anything in a cardboard box from the supermarket uh, don't eat it my rule of thumb is i probably go to the supermarket coles and woolies about once a month if that i buy all my food from a market organic food if you want you don't even need a lot of vegetables if you want uh, they have to be organic but if you want to see the weight dropping off you go on what's called mostly a carnivore diet now my little pendulum is it swings either way on whether you should go full carnivore or uh, what's called a ketogenic diet. And it doesn't really matter. If you're going in that direction with good, high quality, organic, fresh food, your weight will drop off. And then what happens is your energy picks up. And then mm. what happens is you'll be able to do more work. You will get fitter. Your heart will last longer. And it's just a win-win from A to Z. Yeah, yeah. It's co uh, compounds. The, Absolutely the compounds, yeah. Hey, I was just thinking, yeah, because we've got a lot, that's a lot of stuff to try and talk about today in our show. But um, when you mentioned about good quality meats, I've had a few friends lately and I've seen a few Facebook posts and stuff and, and you mentioned misinformation before um, and, and you always got to watch because there's misinformation, there's disinformation, there's good information, but no one tells you what's what. Yes. It's up to you know, us to be um, studious and make sure we do our research. But I've had a lot of people lately talking about, and you and I have talked about the mRNA vaccines for COVID and all the lies that have come out now, sitting back two years later or a year and a half, two years afterwards, I've had a lot of people come up to me now saying, how did you know? And the, and I had an electrician come up to me the other day saying, I know two people that died because of the vaccine, and I had all these reactions. Another guy pulled me up at the um, at the Quarra Beach, at the toilets there. <laughs> I was just coming out, and he's like, hey, Councillor Olds. And uh, we had to start having a chat. And he, and he said, he, he goes, most vaccines, they made my armpit blow up, and I had these big boils. And, and so people are now talking about it that they weren't talking about two years ago. But before getting into the COVID stuff, um, the mRNA, they're saying they're putting these vaccines in our meat now. And... Yeah, listen, I haven't seen strong evidence that. I've seen papers that show that it is the plan. They want to do it, yep. but I don't think it's actually happened. But the, the, the really big point which we have to focus on is the fact that this is the plan, this is the attention. And you could argue that by taking mRNA directly into your bloodstream, obviously it's going to be highly toxic, but to ingest it, to bring it through your, your, your elementary tract, it may neutralize it. But the big, big, big problem is we don't know. We don't know, yeah. So why it's all new the technology. Hell, absolutely, it's new technology. So why the hell would you mess around with something that we know is poisonous when you inject it and then have it in our, in our food sources? So we know that... Uh, that toxic meat, meat from animals that uh, have been highly vaccinated with other things and who've been lot fed. Again, another little tip for you, if it's, great, if it's pasture fed, it's yeah. going to be much better than you, for you than lot fed. And essentially, if you, if you uh, have an animal, let's say a cow, that's been finished off or fully lot fed, the, one of the reasons for that is the, to get marbled meat for them to put on weight and their weight increases, you can sell them for more. And it's back to the same thing we so talked about just before with humans. The reason the cows are putting on weight is because they're getting sick. The fat is being put Storing on toxins. to store the toxicity and then we're eating this. We're, getting, we're having it sold as something that's good or healthy or whatnot. So all these things relate back to each other. And like we said just before we got in here, that conversation in relation to vaccines is so much easier now to talk about. You couldn't even bring up that topic two no, years ago. No, people would get so offended. And now we're getting people, and I am I'm, I'm, keep my ear to the ground in cans, and I, I hear of people who are dying within months or weeks of the vaccine at least once a week. At yeah, least. It's, most people, you know, if you ask anyone, do you know someone that's had a, an adverse reaction? Most people put their hand up. They yeah. say, yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people know someone that's died. And I'm like... But they weren't saying it a couple of years ago because everyone was just drinking the Kool-Aid because yeah. the government wouldn't lie to us and the TV guys wouldn't lie to us and the CHOs and everyone else, of course. you know, They know more, they're scientists. But then like this person that came to me just the other day and said, well, 
how do you, I really respect your stance. And I never came out and spoke. Um, I did speak on the radio program about the um, about the vaccines, only with um, the evidence that was coming out from from Israel's health site, from the Yellow Book site in the UK, from the Lancet, which is you know the medical journey, the one of the foremost medical journeys in the journals in the world. Uh, Stanford, Harvard, these professors. You had Dr. Peter McCulloch, Dr. Robert Malone, all, all these people. That the evidence was already there. And uh, you mean, and then there was doctors saying the other opposite too. But like I said, you've got to distinguish and you've got to go do the research yourself. Which people are like, oh, you're doing your own research. You're a scientist. No, I'm just reading what other scientists are writing about it. But in my gut, <clears throat> and my wife was the same way. We're like, it's new technology. It's only just come out. They haven't. They've never got a vaccine for just the common cold that's actually worked. You know, because there's all these different strains. But in nine months, four companies within a week of each other all got the same. You know, came up and they broke the code and. We were just like, you know what, at our age group and our risk level, we let's sit back and watch. I think it's safer. Someone's being an early adopter, and this is for anything, any new technology, whether it's a council, I've said this in the council, and, and, and you know, they're starting to listen to me now. They want to jump in and go, net, let's go net zero, let's just jump in and get all these green things. And I'm like, guys, let's watch what the other cities around the world are doing, and because they'll make mistakes, and let's learn from their mistakes, and because we're spending other people's money here. But it's the same thing with this medicine. I was like, let's just sit back and have a look, because I don't think we should rush towards this. There are no short, mid, or long-term studies on this, especially no mid- or long-term studies. And they it took them, what, was a year, year and a half before they even came out and told you their short-term, the 12-week trials. They weren't even given that information at the start. So I, and someone said, you know, when they said, how, do you, how did you know? I'm like, well, I, I just, I'd read documents and I used my own intuition. It just didn't, didn't add up. But that takes effort. You, you had to go out specifically and look for that information. We were thrown all this other information that was all misinformation by mm. the people who are meant to look after us, meant to protect us. And for me, I'm all, I already have my feet in those other sources of information because I know enough not to trust the mainstream information that's coming about. As soon as I see something on a newspaper or a headline, my first thought is what rubbish are they selling us now? And invariably I'm right. But um, the, what really concerns me though is the, the narrative that we were given by the so-called sources that were meant to protect us and I was already aware right at the start of all this stuff of the of counter narratives, but these fellows were being cancelled. They were their YouTube channels no, were being closed down. Silence, they yeah. would be absolutely so when when we had this kind of suggestion that there was all these people that were saying, Oh my god, COVID's this, COVID's that, and the vaccines are this and that I knew there were a whole load of other people saying the opposite, but they were getting no airtime, no playtime whatsoever. In fact, quite the opposite. I've, I've had uh, Dr. William Bay on my show. He was yeah, yeah. He, he he's um, he's lost his license through APRA. I've for had him speaking here a couple out, times. Yeah, well, for yeah. speaking out about this stuff, and that is insanity. There's nurses all around the world, doctors all around the world, who have lost their jobs for reporting factual information because it doesn't fit what these companies want to do, which is make multi multi billions of profits. Well, that's the thing too. Like even even if someone wants to debate, even if they want to come up with something that's incorrect. You should be able to explain that and debate them and it shouldn't be afraid of a healthy debate. Hey, we'll just take a quick break and we'll come right back. One sec. All right, guys, you're back with This Week with Brett Olds. I've got Dennis O'Connor uh, from Awakening in Health with me. Now, we were just talking a second ago about um, about the misinformation and I want to talk about the the federal government and the, Ireland's already done this. Um, Canada's already done it. I think England. there's a couple other Western countries, England, yeah, and then now Australia is going to bring in this misinformation bill. And it's going to be run by a non-government organisation, and they get to decide what's true and what's not. Now, the the government over the last few years, three or four, have been the biggest users of misinformation, and now they're going to start like we just said about censorship. This bill, to me, it's it's um it's a George Orwell, it's the Ministry of Truth. There, there was and, and Jacinda Ardern, that that um that bloody socialist or communist, I guess, uh, that ran away before the last election got smashed in New Zealand. She came out during COVID and said. We are your single source of truth. Don't look anywhere else. Don't do anything else. I mean, and this is what these these governments are doing now with this misinformation bill. If you and I got on and started typing on Facebook or Twitter or X, whatever it's called these days, and they deemed, even if it was a truth, if they deemed it to be wrong, Twitter could get fined, we could get fined, and we get shut down. And they're trying to make that a law. What are your thoughts on uh it's is this a good fairly, thing? Yeah, it's really crazy. I, I had uh, my last show that went out on Monday, but I'll, I'll put that up on my channel, uh, Awakening and Health on BitChute and YouTube. But I had a fellow called Mark Batson who uh, has... He, he's made this thing called uh, North Queensland Freedom Network, and he works out of Townsville. And he actually went through the misinformation bill. And some of the wording in that is, f is mind-blowing. 
And he, what he did was he uh, compared the misinformation bill to the bills that came out in Germany pre-war. And I tell you what, the, the, the wording yeah. is really similar. And uh, he describes it way better than me because I'm just paraphrasing from memory. But um, the words in the misinformation bill here is that, you know, councillors or people in charge can have jurisdiction over what is misinformation or not. And we'll work to, you know, help the people out. And so, so what it means is that one person can decide it, whatever they want, if that's misinformation or not. And the thing that's quite frightening is the parallels to the, the, the thing, to the bills that the Nazis were putting out prior to World War Two. It's so bloody similar. It, and, and I'll tell you what, people should be scared. Yeah, was it Shakespeare that said, like, he who ignores history is doomed to repeat it? Yep. And these people, like, this, this history is only, what, 75, 80 years ago? Yeah. And uh, there's people still alive from that yeah. era. Yeah. And we're just ignoring it. Like, uh, people are like, oh, yeah, you're all crazy and... You, you know, conspiracy theorists, whatever else. Like, no, this is, they've written it in black and white. There are documents you can go online now and look up this. It's called the Misinformation Bill. Yes. Um, and I talked a couple of years ago about the um, Defence Enhancement Bill. Yeah. And I talked to a former colonel from the uh, Special Air Services from the Australian SAS, and he explained to me exactly what was wrong with it all and that you can get foreign police coming to our country now. And and, and I said to everyone, I'm not saying it will happen, but the fact that it could happen, I said, we should, just like you said, we should be very cautious and we should be concerned. And then it was a year and a half later, Queensland and Western Australia, we're getting um, 600 cops a year, I think, from overseas. I think it's up to 5,000 police in the next three or four years are going to be here in Queensland. They're not even, they're, these, foreign, these foreign actors are going to come here be policing you and me in our own country. They're not even citizens. And this has all been allowed by this um, uh, Defence Enhancement Bill. But it doesn't t take that much um, thinking or, you know, you don't need that much of an imagination to see that, well, everyone's talking about World War Three. There's artificial intelligence out there saying we've got a 73% chance of going to World War Three with what's going on in the Middle East. I'm not here to pr to purport war and say, yay, or, you know, I think war's a terrible thing. But this is what they're saying. But it doesn't take that much imagination to see what's going on in the world that, who knows, in the next five or six years, we could have a whole bunch of Indonesian or Chinese troops here with the UN written on their berets and running around policing everything in this country, and that's allowed to happen now because of that bill that came in October 2021, that got bipartisan support too. There was only a couple of people spoke out against it. Most people don't even know that's a thing, even my colleagues. And they're like, well, that's that's Fredo. We shouldn't care about that. I'm like, we're, we're elected leaders. We should be paying attention. You can't know everything, of course, but we should be trying to pay attention and just seeing why are they bringing this law in? Why are they bringing this other one in? What's going on? And like you said, if we look through history only 80 years ago, um, you can start going, oh, one plus one equals two. This isn't a good, we're not heading on a good track. And uh, but a lot of people, they just, I guess they're busy in their own lives, or some people, it's, it's more comfortable. You know, it's ignorant, that ignorance is bliss. It's blissfully ignorant. Just put your head in the sand and it'll all get better. Surely they won't do that. They've got our best interests at heart. No, they don't seem to have our best interests at heart at all. There's a couple of points, Brett. One of them is, you know, if you, if your, I don't know, nephew or son or your cousin or your uncle is a policeman in this town and he gets told to go to your house and to pick you up and arrest you and all your family, and he's, he's related to you. And even worse than that, if he's told to shoot you in the head, do you think he'll do it? He'll question it. But how easy do you think it is for somebody from a different country, China, you name it, to take an order, go to your house and shoot you in the head? It's very, very, very easy. This oh. is a deliberate stunt. This is a, a deliberate ploy to keep us in check and keep us in control. And the other thing, and I've said this for years, and I've yet to have somebody challenge me and convince me that I'm wrong about this, but Australia is run by corporations. If anybody thinks that Australia is run by the government, they've, they've got rocks in their heads. Corporations are the lobbyists. They mm -hmm. give the governments money and then the governments do what they want. And we can see that we can see this you with follow uh, the money. Yeah, yeah. We can see this with um, Murray Darling. You know, the, the, the waterways up there have been absolutely destroyed by foreign interests because they, the governments got enough money. You had all these politicians who had shares in water. And now you've got this this environmental disaster that's happening in Murray Darling. So so we, we, we're, we're most people are in this stupor that uh, that the, that, uh, you know, that the local council, for example, is, is being controlled by the local council. It's not. It takes its directions from Brisbane. Then Brisbane takes its directions from Melbourne and in Melbourne takes its directions from Europe. Again, corporations are driving everything. And I'll tell you what, the way things are going, we're just we just got external uh, countries, external forces that do not have our interests at heart. And we can see that in the legislations that are happening now. Well, you can see it through the World Economic Forum and the impact they Great have on example. the World Health Organization and the United Nations. 
I was at a, um, a, a children's thing the other day. All these schools get involved in this in environmental practices, and they're all quoting United Nations sustainability targets and everything else. And the UN has, has got its got its fingers all the way through federal, state, local, and into schools. And um, yeah, I don't I don't trust them. They're not they're not elected. They're unelected uh, bureaucrats that are sitting over there in that war in Davos, Switzerland, for the World Economic Forum. Uh, these multi-billionaires that are sitting there directing what's going to happen around the world. So, no, I, I, I think there's, um, there's substance in what you're saying there. And, 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 you know, you think about it. How in the hell can these companies, indirectly or directly, vaccinate the whole world, do it easily, and have three, four, five, ten different vaccines waiting for every single member of the human population if they decide, but yet they can't just clean up water in Africa? Yeah, that's it. Just bring just clean water in Africa, and we know that the correlation between what we 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 gave credit to vaccines for. So let's say things like smallpox or dengue or you name it. Uh, the credit is given for vaccines for clearing up these things. The correlation between many of these towns and countries having clean water and diseases going is much more plausible than the fact that vaccines did anything so even question the fact that uh, things like smallpox were cleaned up for vaccines they weren't they were cleaned up because of sanitation yeah yeah well bjorn lomberg um and he's a um uh, didn't he win the nobel peace prize years ago he's he's a highly distinguished um uh you know rogue scholar bjorn lomberg you can look him up he's got his own facebook sites and he's written books and He's he said uh, he looked at the, they gave him um, a bunch of other like uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, Nobel Prize winners, and scientists to work underneath him to come up with the top twenty things uh, to fix planet Earth, and um, they gave him two hundred things, and he said straight away he goes that's way too many. If you want if you come up with two hundred things, you're not being serious. So they cut it all down, and he ended up coming up with the number one thing. If you want to help the Earth, is and to fix it is to cure st- is starvation and sanit- clean water, sanitized water. It's, it's not vaccines for this, that, and the other. But jumping back to a point you said about three or four minutes ago, um, you said, like, you know, if we have foreign troops here, how easy it is for them to just come along and say, hey, you got to shoot that person in the head. It is more easy for them than the guy at the cop that's down the street, except if you read a book uh, called Ordinary Men, now, Jordan Peterson was going on about it a few years ago, and I, so I bought it and had a read, and he says that book will change your life. And it is, they're ordinary men. These are ordinary police officers in Germany that at the start of the war... They would have lived in streets next to some of these people or across the road from them. And then, you know, after a year and a half, they were taking pregnant Jewish women out into the woods and shooting them in the head. And they became murderers. And these ordinary men, it's called Ordinary Men, guys. Go out and do yourself a favor and read that book. It's not just the um, it's not just the foreign troops that will come here and do that. Local troops will do that if they've been being told this is the right thing. That person, they didn't get a vaccine or they didn't do what the government said. They're evil. They're evil. They, it doesn't start off day one. They're not pushing people into gas chambers, but they honestly, by the time they get there and they're nudged along, and it didn't take many years at all, and uh, for some people it only took months, they feel vindicated. They feel like they're doing the right thing for society and for humanity because they've been indoctrinated through that propaganda and everything else, and it is it is damn scary. Well, we, we, we look at the mask situation, and we've talked about this before. And again, from the word go, I knew that was rubbish. I used to work in intensive care. I used to work in surgical theatres. And we masks were always to stop saliva, to stop droplets. Yep. And with the narrative we're given about viruses, you collect, you 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 supposedly breathe in viruses. But the other way you collect... You, you, through you, your eyes. Absolutely, yeah. you get viruses through your eyes. So what the hell is a mask going to do, not only to prevent it, but to actually stop it from spreading, it does zero. It does nothing. There is no research to says it, to say that it does any good whatsoever. It's written on the back and that it doesn't stop correct. coronavirus. And when I was walking in shopping centres without a mask, because I refuse to do stupid, idiotic things, and I'm sorry anybody who's listening to this, if you guys are wearing masks, you're raising your carbon dioxide, you're increasing your chances of getting cancer, and you're doing something idiotic. I want you to think about that, okay? To anybody who's listening to this, I refuse to do it. I had people coming up to me going, "Where's your mask?" You know, you, you had people policing each other I got dogged into nobody, the cops and not wearing nobody a mask. even thought to maybe question why why wouldn't you wear it and again for me that answer was simple what about your eyes because yeah, yeah. that's how we're meant to catch viruses this does nothing I'm not putting my health at risk because of somebody else's stupidity well you could tell that 80 90 I don't know I'm just pulling out numbers but most of the population the, the clear majority of the population didn't believe masks worked anyway because the second they dropped the mandate well, I, I flew down to Melbourne with my wife and we both didn't wear masks, just got on the plane. They're like, where's your mask? I was like, oh, I've got an exemption. So you just get on. Because I refused to participate as yep. well. Because after I did my research, not that I'm a scientist or anything else, but I have common sense and I can read reports and, and, and make my own mind up. 
So we flew down there and everyone on the plane, there must have only been five or six of us on the plane without a mask on. And the hundreds and hundreds of people with a mask on. We were down there for three or four days and we flew back. In that meantime, the mandates dropped like two days after we flew down. And when we flew back up, there's only five or six people on the plane with a mask on. And those hundreds and hundreds. So if they honestly believe they were, because COVID didn't go away, but just because a premier made a decision that, and she made the decision two weeks earlier, that, oh, midnight on this day, the, you can take your mask off. And people would sit there and be like, oh, I'll just wear them till then. And, and if they believe they work, they would have left them on. Critical thinking. And I saw reports, I think in Victoria, where they're bringing in um, masks have to be worn in hospitals again. People need to stand up. They need to be questioning this rubbish. And and what you said before, again, we got to start pulling out these things and thinking about them. Words are being weaponized. The media are using words and they're weaponizing them and this whole thing do your own research you know if you believe that if so, anybody who's listening to this believes that next time you buy a car don't question a salesman yeah just what are you a car yeah. expert just believe him just pay twice three times what the car is worth and it'll break down in three weeks but you know don't be don't do your own research because of course the salesperson is going to tell you the truth it's ludicrous i don't, I don't understand how anybody with with any critical thinking can fall for this well even dog barking things like you know you've got all these different products there that stop your dog barking it's like oh i'll just believe what google told me this i'll just buy that for a thousand bucks yeah do your research and look at every different product. Look at the, what people are saying about it. If you know someone that's used it, find out, hey, which dog barking thing has worked for you? And you'll find out, oh, this one's probably the best one. But that's doing your own research, like Correct. you're saying. It's like Correct. we do it for every other thing in life. And what's research? Research yeah. is re. It means repeat. Search is look. Yeah. It just means look again. So words are being weaponized. Research. Look again. Don't don't take things at face value. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Hey, we'll have another quick break and we'll come right back and we'll keep uh, kicking on. All right, guys, we're back with This Week with Brett Olds. Uh, I've got Dennis O'Connor here from Awakening and Health. We're having a good chat about all things. Uh, well, over the last few years, we talked about the misinformation bill. We talked about me trying to lose weight and what I need to start <laughs> doing. Well, and I didn't stop drinking to lose weight and everything else. I just, but then I was like, I was feeling better in the head and everything else. And I'm just like, you know what? Maybe I'll start start running. I haven't ran in years. So anyway, I've done two, two lots of 5Ks on a treadmill because until I get down, you know, under 100 kilos, which might take a while, um, I, uh, I don't like running on the road. It just puts a lot of shock on my body and everything else. But then we, so we had a quick chat about, you know, diet wise and and what the fat's doing, keeping tox, toxins out, and I've got to stop eating so much processed meat, which is uh, that's gonna be hard. But um, but then we talked about the misinformation bill and governments, and you know, we got to start redoing our own research, which is looking again and asking questions. We should never be afraid to ask questions, and we should always be nervous when someone is trying to stop us from asking questions or having a debate. I have debates all the time with members of the public um, in, in the council chambers um, because some people have different opinions and they've, they've read different things and, and it's a healthy thing. I'm not always right, uh, you know, I'm not often wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I, I thought I was wrong once, but I was wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, so I, uh, but no, just being facetious there, guys. But I, but I don't mind having a debate and, you know, being pointed out and I'm, I'm always open-minded and so should anyone be in life about anything. Um, but no, I, I just don't know. We've got well, the council elections are coming up in March 16th next year. I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's going on. Everyone's starting to posture for a position. I don't know. They've got teams and teams and teams. Everyone just thinks you've got to have a team to be met. You know, there are 77 councils in Queensland, um, um, and only five of them are led by a majority of a team. Kansas one, Townsville's one, I forget the other three. The majority of the councils in Queensland don't get don't run by teams and they don't fall over. You get a decent leader in, they can they can work with her. There should be one team. Whoever the, the people of the region vote in, those ten, those nine councillors and the mayor, that's Team Cairns. They should just work together. And if you've got a decent mayor, they should be able to work with whomever. But we got um, there's a green, there's an extreme green team out there. Just came, excuse me, just came out. There's um, Team Eden. Uh, Amy Eden's named it after herself. Very American, I thought. I said that to her. I said. You can't name a team after yourself. That's a, is that narcissistic? What's what's going on there? Like call it something else, team, anything else, and then get the unity team. And I don't know if there's going to be another team. Last election we had the North Queensland State Alliance team. They didn't do very good at all. Uh, there was a Connect Cairns team the four years before that in 2016. They didn't do very. They didn't get anyone in. But I don't know. I, I'm an independent, as you know. We got Kathy Zyger's an independent. Rob Pine is an independent now. But um, and I guess Amy Eden was an independent there for a year or two. She she was the Indy team. But we still have an impact and we still have influence in that room. Um, it is hard, though, if, if the team that's in, because seven out of the ten councillors are on a team, they can form a block. And uh, so when they want to play hardball, 
the debate gets closed off sometimes, you know. I just, I think people need out there, I don't know how you feel about it, but me being on the inside of it, looking at it, I'm just like, don't put a majority team in, guys. Like, te- I don't like state or federal politics because of the two-party preferred system. I think the whole system's broken, like, like you said earlier. It, they're, they're a corporation. And then when I, I joined one of the major parties and was thinking of running for higher office, and I got so disillusioned because you don't, you don't represent the people once you go that high. And if you're in a major party, you do what you're told, you toe the line, and it's a corporation. We don't need that at local government. We shouldn't have teams. I just, I don't know. Legally, you can, but I don't think we should. What did you, what's your thoughts on? Yeah, I, th- I think it goes a bit deeper. And I was looking through um, with, I can't remember who I was looking through this uh, a while back, but uh, what, what bothers me the most, and the major I didn't even know this a few years back, is the, the position of the CEO. And uh, essentially, from what I understand, in, if you read through what the CEO of the council does, they can overrule, overrule the mayor. They can overrule all the councillors. So essentially, so from what I understand, and, and again, the CEO has to play a careful game so they're not caught out, but uh, the CEO is running the council. They, they're a non-elected, um, I didn't vote for the CEO here in Cairns, and again, their take, a CEO is, is uh, the, the head of a corporation or a company. So that, again, they're taking their orders externally. Okay. Yeah, well, the CEOs, like I, and I'll have to go through the Local Government Act, yeah. they do run the day-to-day, the operational stuff. So the 1,200 employees at Cairns, the CEO is, is in charge of them. The CEO doesn't actually work for the people of Cairns. Uh, the CEO works for the, the 10 of us, the elected council. So you guys vote in your elected councillors and mayor, and then we, we hire the CEO. Now, the only... have, you, have you read the fine print in there? No, I've, it, got, it, well, I've it, got to go read it, I guess. Yeah, but... yeah, it essentially says the CEO can overrule any councillor and even the mayor depending on, on what it's for. And, I, and again, somebody else They could get down. fired if they do that. Cause there like, was Dr. Karen Ben, actually, uh, yeah. who you've had in your yeah, show yeah, as yeah. well, who actually went, and I love her, her what she does because she actually does a lot of very good meticulous research. And uh, yeah, if you, the, the, the couple of statements in there, they are open to interpretation. But if you interpret them in one way, essentially for one way of interpreting that is that the CEO can have all the power if they want. Yeah, because there's- And that's how they, how they get us. Yeah, because even though the CEO technically works for the 10 of us, the elected yeah. people, only the mayor can direct the CEO, but if the CEO was to override elected council, which I don't, I'd have to see that because I haven't seen. I've been there for eight years and I haven't seen an example of that. Yeah. I did see when she came in and, and put the um, took cash away without talking to the councillors. That's I was a good like, example. Yeah, that's a good example. But we we overturned that. We got the vote because of the people in the public space. But um, if they were to overrule, if a CEO was to come in and overrule, they would be fired pretty damn quickly. So I'd, not, I'd have to read not it. Not sure. Again, as I said, I, I don't pretend to be an expert, and you'd know a lot more about it. But uh, the way Karen, Dr. Ben, described it was very convincing, I've got to say. And, and I, I think she does have a lot of integrity. She, yeah, the I research a, I've seen her do has, has usually been absolutely on point. Yeah, I might have a coffee with her or something and get her yeah. to show me. Because, again, there's so many acts and policies and legislation, and, and it's all written in legalese. Yes. And I've always said, yes. it, and it's supposed to be, actually, I think there's a law um, from, from in the Constitution it says that all um, laws, policies, or legislation written by any level of government has to be easy for the layman to understand. Uh, because, and my thing is, because if it's not, if you if you can't explain something simply, it's either because you're trying to hide something or you don't understand it yourself. And there is a lot of legalese, there's a lot of stuff that's written that's really hard to understand, and it can be interpreted in different ways. And that's been a frustration for a few years, even for our current mayor. I've had many conversations with other councils and the mayor, and. and, and we hadn't got much hair left, but we pull our hair out sometimes because, like, well, legislation is supposed to be simple for the layman to understand. It, it shouldn't be open to interpretation. I will, I will, I will. I'll make a, I'll make a call to Karen, Doctor Ben, mm-hmm. and I'll have a chat to her and find out because that hasn't been my experience. I've seen like this CEO who's come from Brisbane and worked, and that's at a political council down there. So it's not anyone's. It's not her fault that she's her whole experience is a Brisbane council, which is Labor and Liberal. And I can't imagine being an officer down there at a council that's a, a political council because if you want to talk to this councillor who's a Liberal member and then you can talk to this councillor who's a Labor member, even if they agree, they disagree because they hate each other, you, as an officer, you'd be you, you'd be compromised all the time. So you'd have to have so many policies to protect yourself and to protect those councillors. So, But that's the, the experience that she's brought here to Cairns, which we're not a political council. We're a regional council and not political at all. I just think sometimes um, some of the policies that have been brought in, and everything else, I think it's over the top. Absolutely, and and there yeah. therein lies lies a good a good observation or a good example. And uh, you know, I brought up this up on my show on Monday. Is you know these these cameras absolutely everywhere? 
who, who, we, I didn't vote for these. I don't know anybody who's happy with this. You know, I and tell you, there's crime, a lot. Crime is through the roof. Yeah, so they those don't cameras, stop they're not looking at uh, at offenders. They're looking at us. And again, this, the, 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 we, we, we can, we can make assumptions. And I'll make an assumption here, and I'm happy to be corrected about that. But we see the same things happening in other countries like Yule's in London and uh, you know mm. so so we you know China is, is the best example they're on the front foot yeah, one and, camera for two people correct yeah. so so though so so that I feel is an agenda to essentially to have us all in these big open-air prisons well it can be you know maybe that's not why some people started putting them up first and that might be naive to say but they can absolutely be used for ulterior motives but I will I will correct you on one thing like as a counselor because I, I hate them. I hate Big Brother being everywhere. I remember the first camera going in in Cairns. It was on Lake Street, just near, near Tropos. You yeah. see at Lake Street and Spence Street. And um, I remember that back in 1995 or 96, our first camera. And now we've got one of the best CCTV networks in Australia. And um, every time there's a crime, every time there's a new building built, people are like, we need a camera there. We need to get the public. We get yes, asked all the time. I know. So I voted. People like, I've had other mates because they hate them too. And they're like, why are you voting for these things, Oldsy, when you don't like them? And I said, well, because I've got to represent the people. So many people want these bloody things because they think it protects them. And yeah, look at your crime rate. What's it, it doing? My it's, car, it's, yeah. you know, it's like the war on drugs in America. You know, you've got people who are who are zombies on the streets. You know, the, 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 Portugal was a great, I know we're, t we're off shooting now, but Portugal was a great example in the early 2000s. It was one of the most violent countries in Europe, in the world because of drugs. And what the government at the time did, this is around the mid 90s to the 2000s was they stopped putting money into fighting drugs and what they did was they put all that money into infrastructure so so businesses got paid way more to employ addicts and within two or three years the whole country's crime rate absolutely fell through the floor and it was it was a, a really kind of unique thing and it was it was so successful that that government who instigated that were put in again in a landslide yeah so uh so we've we've you know every time we hear these words the war and this the war and that the war and the virus um for me that's propaganda you know we, we look at uh you know this supposed vaccine was meant to Stop transmission of COVID. Stop the virus. We're supposed from to stop you getting stop it. This, stop stop transmission. That. Stop now everything. we know it's just rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. And lies, then we look lies, at the companies. Lies. Who's benefiting? Follow the money. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson. They have made multi, multi billions off the back of government spending our tax money. And we we also have this misnomer. Oh, the vaccine is free. The vaccine isn't free. Our taxes are paying for it. And an example I throw out a lot is Johnson & Johnson two and a half years ago, three and a half years ago, lost a massive, one of the biggest uh, lawsuits in the history of the world for putting some for putting um, asbestos in baby powder. That's why we don't have baby powder on our shelves. I, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, the no, we white. talked about it before. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and Johnson and Johnson deliberately covered up that asbestos was in the baby powder. Asbestos causes something called mesothelioma, which is a form of cancer, and they're still paying that out. And this is one of the companies that we're trusting to make a vaccine. To put something into they, your arm. They were killing us. They were killing your well, children. Well, there's if um in New York, which um, Governor Cuomo he just released a book, and actually I've been saying for. Ages. No one's come out and apologised, and I don't like Governor Cuomo. He's, he's horrible. Yeah. He is a horrible person. He has come out and apologised. He goes, well, we did make mistakes. We were going on the best information we had. Oh. We're sorry. And I'm like, at least he said he's sorry. At least he's admitted there's mistakes. And in New York, the Supreme Court of the state, not the federal Supreme Court, has ordered all nurses and anyone that got fired in the medical industry to be able to go back to work and get back pay for the last three years. That will be a t that, To me, that's a turning point because there will be other states start to follow. Australia will be two or three years behind. Because even with the thimidomine, that yeah. injection they were given in Europe, they, they saw what was going on and they, they put a kibosh on it. And it took two and a half, three years for Australia to end up stopping with the thimidomine back in the day. Mm. We, we're always behind the eight ball, but watching what's been going on and then hearing some of these doctors still coming out and they're talking about, they said the mRNA doesn't affect your genome sequence, doesn't affect your DNA, the lipid nanoparticles and the because that little bit of fat that it travels in, it stays in, the, in your shoulder, it'll stay in the site. Well, they've proven now beyond a doubt it goes all throughout your body into every major organ, into your um, your gonads, your, the ovaries of women. That that's really important because again, we, we the fact that it collects um, very very strongly in your reproductive organs is absolutely massive. And I'll I'll throw it out there to again listeners: Are you having trouble conceiving? Are you having trouble with your hormones? And because of the time frame, you might have had a, you know only one or two jabs a year or two years ago. That doesn't mean to say that those jabs aren't affecting you two, three, mm. four years later. We have no idea what it's gonna what's gonna happen with these things in ten years, fifteen years. And unfortunately, we got such short-term memories that if somebody gets a stroke in five years, 
nobody will relate that to having a vaccine and it could very well be yeah it's 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 scary but listen to these doctors talk there is evidence and proof starting to come out now and they're saying it does mess with your genome sequence and it does have trace dna components in the shots and i'm like what they, we were told that was not couldn't happen everything else but crosses the blood barrier barrier too um it, it i don't know i'm just sitting there going oh, i'm so this, thankful this, I didn't thing take any. A, this thing is an absolute weapon it's horrendous and the, another thing for people to be really aware of is uh previously before i think it was around the 80s um we could never patent anything that was living you could only patent things that were made okay yeah. and this massive horrible horrible company called monsanto which sprays all this horrible poison on all our crops and all our farms and it genetically modifies everything planted and i can't remember which way the wind was blowing but they planted upwind of all these farms their gmo crops went downwind and started um mixing with normal crops this is in canada in, in the early 80s and and uh, in around there maybe 90s as well so there was a massive court case for monsanto to prove that because of the their their seeds going into other farms they had a right to the other farmers crops because their seeds polluted yeah, the other yeah, farmers crops. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've heard that. And as a result, it set a precedent that living things could be patented. Okay? And this is very, very important for people. So if we have a precedent in Canada whereby Monsanto can claim ownership of their product because it's infected a crop, could you extrapolate that to people? So in other words, if uh, I don't have a vaccine and I'm kind of, you know, this, this living person who, who is unmodified and you do, can a company claim ownership over you? Claim rights over you in some way? It sounds and, ludicrous. And, and, but yeah. It sounds ludicrous, but believe me, these are the kind of tricks they use to uh, to to take our freedoms from us. I've read articles about transhumanism and this kind of stuff, and I'm like, yeah. wow! It's like again, I, I read everything, yeah. and, I, and it doesn't mean I believe everything. But um, but no, I, I know where you're going with that because there's a lot of people out there asking that same question: Is this something that now we all of a sudden we've lost some rights without knowing it? Correct. And I'm like. I don't know if that's the case or not, but the, the, the questions are being raised. But I'm just glad to see there's so much evidence coming out. And I don't know when the um, the court cases all start. Well, I know there's some that already started. When the when the lynchings happen, when people yeah. there needs to be people this, punished this for is this. The problem, Brett. You know, and and this is the so I, I, you, maybe you you might be aware, but you know, a corporation is a person, right? Yep. And if you look at the definition of a person, a person doesn't have to be a human. It's an entity. Okay. This is again back to legalese. And the 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 convenient thing about that is when the the sentences come out or when when the when people when something has to be held accountable it can be the corporation or the person so the person inside the corporation gets off scot-free and we saw that again with johnson and johnson baby yeah, powder who is in jail kids died all mm. around the world maybe tens of thousands who's in jail for this and the same thing unfortunately will happen it's easy for them to wrap up pfizer it's easy for them to wrap up johnson and johnson they'll just go elsewhere and make it up a new one off the back of the profits they already had and we never saw we but, saw a couple in other countries the documents pfizer made countries sign to indemnify them we, we never saw what australia signed yeah. they probably can't they're probably 100 percent indemnified well, because well of fraud leaders. negates all contracts and this is where we need to be tackling it from that they, they were fraudulent they lied to us so we need to be pulling this up and then we make them accountable we don't just make the corporations accountable we make the people who made the decisions accountable that'd be I great, that'd be great to see i don't know how we get there either hey we'll have a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about something a bit more fun <laughs> uh a, bit, a little bit of our sport update because i promised all my listeners i'd keep them updated on the cricket uh, and the tennis but it won't be it won't be boring guys lots of good stuff going on one sec all right guys it's uh, this week with brett olds you got me Brady olds and i've got dennis o'connor from awakening and health but i thought i'd end the show um talking about two of my favorite sports tennis and cricket the cricket world cup's on at the moment we won't talk about the rugby because we got some the rugby league we got smashed by new zealand 30 nil but anyway i didn't watch it anyway but it was good the week before i was giving everyone grief because the kiwis lost to us in the cricket they lost the world cup to south africa and they lost to us in the rugby league but then this week it's a bit, bit different story so we'll ignore the league but um i will start off with tennis actually real quick novak Djokovic, okay the, the greatest of all time um he just overtook rafa nadal for at masters tournaments 1000 uh the um, atp 1000 tournaments they're the, they're the next ones after the grand slams the next level down um his winning percentage he just overtook nadal they were pretty much really close and they still are but he's jumped from second to one now, there's something interesting about old novak isn't it could you you yeah, tell me what that is? he stood up for himself and he refused to get vaccinated. Obviously, um, now his reasons mightn't have been the same as ours, but he but he didn't want to. He didn't want to be dictated to, and he missed out on. Well, it basically cost him a year, at least. Yeah, at least, and, and at least two Grand Slams he would have had, and he's already got twenty four now. Um, but he's uh, he just won the um, the Paris the Masters. 
Now he in the he had a stomach um, flu or something. Or he had something going on with his stomach, and in the quarterfinals he was down to the twenty third seed um, ranked player in the world. I forget this guy's name, and uh, it came to the third set, and it, I think it was he was up five four, and he got broken to five all, and the crowd they boo him every time. For some reason the French hate him, so he he was sitting there and he, he was sitting there cheering him on, saying, "Come on, boo louder, boo louder," and they did. They booed and booed him, and then he something just switched. He went to beast mode. He came out, uh, you know, at the next game, and he um, he broke the guy to love, and then he served it out to love. Didn't lose another point the whole game, and won the set and the match. And then he went through, and he won the um, semi-final in three tough sets again. And then he flogged Dimit- uh, Gregor Dimitrov um, in straight sets in the final, which is he's he's won three Grand Slams this year, and he's won um, I think three or two ATP thousand tournaments. And another one, so he's won seven tournaments. He He's only lost one game um, since the French Open. That was the, the final of Wimbledon. But this guy is just unbelievable. He's amazing. Um, it's just what he's doing. He's breaking records and setting it. He'll now be... He only has to win one game in, his, in the next tournament, so the first round, which you'd put that down as laid down was there. And then it doesn't matter what Carlos Alcaraz does. If he wins the tournament or anything else, uh, um, Djokovic will finish the world uh, the season as the world number one again. And it'll be 399 weeks as number one as of January 1st this year. So I just yeah, like... Well, you have to ask those questions. It, I, know, I know I know, we, we use it a bit facetiously or whatnot, he is unvaxxed, but we need to be doing comparisons between vaccinated athletes and unvaccinated athletes. And we know for a fact that myocarditis, heart injuries in young adults, it was unheard of mm. 10, 15 years ago. Unheard of, you just didn't get it. And long. now the media are trying to tell us it's normal. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, it is absolutely not normal, but those studies do need to be done. Yeah, they absolutely do. I um, and then autopsies need to be done too, and people absolutely, die yes. to see you know vaccine unvax. I need to take it out as a um as a variable, if nothing yeah, else. Correct. But, they, but they're not doing them. Correct. But then I'll get into um the cricket World Cup. So the old enemy, England. Um, they love beating us. We love beating them. They've been whinging ever since the Ashes because they try to say we won the moral Ashes. You know, we we're a bit morally a better team and this and that. Where they we drew the Ashes, which is hard to do over there in England. That's like a victory. We haven't won the Ashes in England since 2003, I think it was. Um, so Ricky Ponning couldn't do it as captain. Um, Steve Waugh's last team last year over then win. It's really hard to do. So getting a draw, a two-all draw, is huge. But they claim the moral thing. And then you had Johnny Bairstow, who's an knucklehead. They call him the ginger winger. He, um, he, he complained because he got stumped by Alex Carey. And then we got to play him and knock them out of the final. So they, they've lost seven games, and they've only won one. Oh, they've lost... Six games have only won one at the World Cup. They're the lowest. They might not qualify for the Champions Trophy. Now, these guys allegedly won the last World Cup. I say allegedly because I watched that game. New Zealand won. There was a mistake made with overthrows, and they cost them it cost New Zealand a run, and they shouldn't have got the extra run in England. So, actually, New Zealand should have won that World Cup by one run. Wow. But, it, but anyway, uh, so England, they got to, they were the last, well, they won the last World Cup, apparently, and they were the, one of the favourites to go in to make the final against India. And they are getting flogged in Australia. We beat them by 33 runs the other night. Didn't play our best game, but it knocked them out. They've got zero chance mathematically or anything. And it just it felt so bloody good. Australia are in third spot, so it looks like we're going to make the semi final. Tomorrow night, we're playing, actually, tonight, we're playing, because so I pre record this, we're playing um, uh, Afghanistan. Now, they're not to be um, just thinking they're a walk over their minnow. But we've uh, we've got we've got some work to do with them, and then we play Bangladesh after that. Bangladesh beat Sri Lanka last night, and uh, and Matthews, what's his name, Angelo Matthews, the first person ever in professional cricket to be timed out and given out, zero balls faced, got a duck. He came out, he was faced up because you got two minutes to get out there and face it because you've got to keep the time going. And as he went to pull his strap on his helmet, the strap came off, so he took it off and waited for someone to bring him a new helmet. And then all the Bangla- all the Bangladesh were like, "How's that? How's that?" and the umpires had to give him out. Now, it was a pretty dodgy way to give someone out. The first first person in 146 years of cricket. and uh, But it was hilarious because Bangladesh won. They were on the same points as England. They'd only won one game. Now they've won two. So England are on the bottom of the ladder. It's just so... I love it. I love watching England being down there on the bottom of the ladder. Uh, I've been staying up watching every Australian game because you're up till three in the morning sometimes. And I've been staying up watching every time England play because I'm loving watching them lose. <laughs> well, because... They come out and they take this high ground. Joe Root came out uh, just the other day and he's like, oh, person for person, we're better than Australia. We're this, we're that. They, they've got this this sense of reality. Is I don't know where they get their reality from. They Have a look at yourselves, guys. You're crap. You're doing really poorly. Doesn't mean you should hate yourselves, but don't come out and make big calls. And, and Johnny Bairstow, the ginger winger, he got out first ball to a loosener from Mitchell Stark. It was a diamond duck, a golden duck's first ball duck, but the first ball of an inning's called a diamond duck. And it... 
I'm telling you, mate, I'm loving life at the moment. I don't know if we'll win. I think India are the red-hot favourites, and I guarantee you the semi-final and the final will be on pitches that suit their bowlers and their, their batters, which, fair enough, who cares? You've got to beat them, beat them on their turf. But I do think they'll be in the final, and it looks like we'll be playing South Africa in the semi-final um, in, a, in a week from now. And if that's the case, uh, we can be South Africa. Like, they've been looking really good when, when they're on, they're on, but they've actually lost to the Netherlands. They got smashed by India the other night. Australia's got a real chance here. We could make the final, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bet against India at the moment because they're just so bloody good over there. They, they've, they're looking unbeatable. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah. go. And uh, my, my team Tottenham were playing last night and we're losing. So uh, but uh, we're, top of, we're top of the Premier League. So, oh, you are? You're yeah, yeah. well, we, we, we might not be. Uh, I, I caught the score just before I came in here. So we were a goal down against Chelsea. Oh, but, no. uh, my yeah. mate's an Aston Villa boy. Yeah, yeah, they're doing really well this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very well this season. So I don't, yeah. I don't keep up with the uh, with the football. The, the, I call, we call it soccer yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. But yeah, but I um, it's the biggest sport in the world. Yeah, it's apparently a... so. And then, and then the other thing, uh, the, the, the rugby, the Union World Cup. Yeah, so New Zealand and South Africa are not my favourite countries at the moment. Yeah, we, well, we should have won that. But, uh, well, you yeah. lost by a point to to Argentina. No, 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 no. Yeah, that we Ireland, sorry. Yeah, Ireland. Yeah, yeah. who, yeah. who so, did you guys lose uh, to? South Africa got us in the in the you, group stage. You'll slap me for thinking you're England now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, because you know when they play um, different games, all yeah. three of the countries they play under one banner. That's the don't lines, they? yeah. The lines, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah. so no. So that's more or less Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, okay. but yeah, a really good final. Uh, South Africa and New Zealand. Except the team that couldn't score a try won by a point. Yeah, just yeah, penalty, yeah. penalty, pe- yeah, four penalties. That, yeah, that's exactly what. But again, they got caught out with that. England did. So uh, who I forget who knocked England out. I think Argentina. It, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. By one point. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then South Africa beat them by a point, was it South Africa? Or New Zealand beat them by a point, I that's forget. That's right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the All Blacks, they, um, they were looking pretty poorly halfway through the tournament, but yeah. they, they got it done in the end. Oh, no, they didn't get it done. South Africa got South their Africa fourth. Did. yeah. They got their fourth World Cup. But yeah, I didn't watch much of the Union. I haven't been a big Union fan yeah. for years. And then when, after what they did to um, Israel Folau, uh, Australia, oh, yeah. the Wallabies, I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what, you're going to play politics. I go to watch sport, like the circus, just to be entertained and, you know, be really impressed. And I love my sport, but I'm not here that you... Absolutely. I, I, I went off soccer for a, a fair while with uh, every frigging game starting with them taking the knee for yeah. BLM. Keep it bloody out of the sport. Just, pl- just Keep it out. Just play, just do your circus yeah. thing. Look, and they all told us to vote um, to vote yes in the referendum too. They can't be that bloody influential because no one listen to them. Yeah. Hey, I'm out of time, mate. It's great to see you, Dennis. Thanks for coming in on that short notice. Fantastic, mate. Pleasure. See you soon.